Hello folks and welcome to Modular Curiosity Season 2, Episode 3. Today, I'm going to try something that I think is very interesting and very cool, but first, it's story time. That's right. I am a software engineer, and for many, many decades, I've worked at various companies. Right now, I work here. This is the company which manages California's electrical grid and the commodities market for electricity. We are not for profit, and uh, it's pretty awesome to work there because we're doing a lot of great work with renewable energy. That has nothing to do with VCV Rack. But as part of my software history, I've worked at various other companies, including companies that have taken documents and information that would be viewed through a browser and modified it so that it could be accessed through different devices, or more importantly, so that handicapped people could interface back with their browser. And one of the things I heard at a conference years ago, which just was brilliant. Now remember this is the time when our phones didn't look like this. They looked like this. And at this conference, the speaker said, this is a disabled device, meaning whenever we use this device to try to send a text, and you remember what it was like trying to send a text with three letters per key, we are disabled people now. We cannot use the full keyboard. We have to use this weird interface, which makes us disabled because we are not capable of using our full abilities when sending a text. That's an interesting concept. So I started thinking now about VCV Rack. And notice that even though it's an incredible piece of software, and this is not specific to VCV Rack alone, but to any music software, any VST, anything we control, this is a disabling device. Meaning when we move our mouse like this, we can't use both hands. We can't use all our fingers. We can use one hand. In fact, it's less than one hand. We could actually use one finger. We could point at something, as I'm doing it, we could point at something and we could drag it with a single finger, as I'm doing here in this video. We can grab a single knob and twist it, but it's really one finger. But we have, most of us have 10 fingers. I don't. That's a whole nother story. <laughs> Because this is a disabled device, there must be some way that we could make this easier to use. Now, what does that have to do with the rest of us? Well, if you had an actual modular synthesizer, you would have both hands up and you'd be tweaking knobs with both hands, you'd be pushing buttons, you'd be playing keyboards, you'd be doing everything. We can't do that. We have one finger. Unless we start using MIDI continuous controllers. And when I start playing with my continuous controller module and my Impact LX49 keyboard, a whole world opened up. And that's what this episode is about. So let's go check that out. Test one, two. Got it. Okay. Part two. Stop stepping on my headphone cord. Okay, folks, so I have built this patch. Now down here, this is all gonna be coming in later. This is gonna be a second voice, but let's look at what I have for my first voice. So I have my keyboard, my LX49 Plus. <laughs> And that is my voice. So what is that? Well, I've got the control voltage coming through my slew limiter. That's what gives me my slide. We did that last time. I have the control voltage then going to both even VCOs. In fact, I can get rid of that right now to simplify it. And so the pitch for my keyboard is controlling the pitch of the oscillator. And on this one, I'm using a pulse wave. This one, I'm using a sawtooth wave. And on my pulse wave, I have an LFO, which is changing the pulse width modulation a little bit to give me this sound. I'm going to pull out just that 
that uh, sawtooth. Hear how it's... Hear how that's fluctuating? Okay, that's just my that's just my LFO moving the pulse width modulation. There we go. And now I'm mixing both oscillators through a molt to the output to a VCA. The VCA is being controlled by an ADSR from my gate. So every time I press the key down, I get this function. And as you can see from the VCA here, I have a quick attack, a fairly quick decay into a sustain. And I would actually like a little more volume. So if I bring the sustain down, and releases how long it takes after I let go of the key. So I want it to die out a little bit. And that goes to a reverb. But I also want some movement in the sound. So I have a filter. And so you'll notice I have from the gate, I have another ADSR setup. And now I'm gonna use the output of that to go to the cutoff of my filter. So that's how I get that yow, 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 yow sound. Now, what I wanted to do, first of all, is I wanted to modulate this filter. So I didn't want it just to go yow. I wanted my mod wheel to make this go whoa, 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 whoa. Now, how would we do that? Well, that sounds like an LFO, doesn't it? Okay, so let's look at how I've set up the mod wheel. I have the mod wheel coming to a VCA so that I can turn down how much I want to add. I can adjust how much of that mod wheel I want to feed into this VCA, which looks like it's actually really redundant. So let's just put it there because that's where I need it. Then I have the triangle wave from this LFO coming in and the output I am now combining with the output of that's, that's confusing, I don't need that. The output of this ADSR plus the LFO. Those guys are being combined and sent to the filter. Now, when I have my mod wheel all the way down, see I'm only using this ADSR. As I bring the mod wheel up, I'm basically turning this knob and I'm adding this LFO to the cutoff of my filter. Now that's pretty cool. But gosh, it'd be really nice if I could also control this. But I don't have enough mod wheels, and I don't have enough hands. Or do I? Okay, here I have my keyboard. And up here I have a whole bunch of knobs which can send MIDI continuous controller information. You'll notice the number. It goes from 0 to 127. Now, what if I decided to take, say, this knob and adjust this LFO. Okay, so what I need to do is have my MIDI CC, and I was told it listen to Windows MIDI, listen to my LX49 keyboard. I'm going to click that, and now all I have to do is twist this, and if you look right here, you see it's realized, oh, I'm listening to port 74. So I'm gonna come from here into a VCA because I wanna be able to limit this. You'll see why in a moment to the frequency. So now, if I press a key, and by the way, I also have a sustain pedal so I could hold a note without touching it with my hand. But now I'm gonna start playing with this. 
Now, whatever I feed in with this knob is going to be added to this. So let's start it very slow. Okay, so that's gonna be as slow as it's going. Now, as I add this knob, I can speed that up. And actually, I don't even need this VCA. I could just go ahead and use this because I'm it is an attenuverter. It's basically doing the same thing as that VCA. Because if you allowed all of the range through, like that, it would go all the way into audio range. And so, I don't want that. Let's turn it down. Okay, that sounds like a good high end. So there's one control. Now, here's another thing. I noticed that as I play this note, this filter has gone very low because of the way I have my ADSR. Now that's perfect for my normal sound. But I would like to actually change the cutoff. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take an output from here, an input from there, I'm going to run a second, a second controller, this one. And notice how I just click, twist it, and it learns that, oh, that's on port 71. And now I am going to give it a VCA. Have this come through here. And now let's see what happens. So I can, after playing the note, I can add more cutoff. So how about I bring it down? And if I want more cutoff, basically I can control this knob live from here. Well, let's keep going. Wouldn't it be nice to control the resonance? Because see, right now I have to reach out here to do some and then come across and use the mouse. What if I just did everything from here? Well, now we know what we're going to do, right? We're going to click this. It's in learn mode. I'm going to twist this knob. This is, ah, oh, that seems to be on port five. So let's take that. We're going to go to resonance and let's see what happens. <laughs> Wow, now I have real-time control of all sorts of variables. You know what else would be really fun? Is if I can now control the rise and fall of the slew limiter. So I'll tell you what, I'm going to do that with this control. So what I'm going to do is I will... Uh, click this. And by the way, just because I have four here and four here in the Windows MIDI CC, and I happen to have four here and four here, they don't line up. I can map any one of these to any one of these in any order. I'm just visually thinking, okay, it makes sense. I'm going to click that one, twist the knob, and it has learned that it looks like it's port 78. Now this one, I'm going to have one in, two outs, 
to change rise and fall. And what I'm going to do is I will be adding time to this rise and fall. And what that means is I will lengthen the slew limber, lengthen the amount of slide I have. So let's uh, play with that a little bit. Now here it immediately goes up when I press this. Press that E flat. What if I want to slide up? Now I'm finding that I have a bit of a fine adjustment here that, that if I go about that far, it's too long if I go here. So I would like to actually expand this adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through another VCA and turn it down just a little bit. So let's see, let's see how that works. So if I turn it all the way down, I have only this. So what I want to do is I want to turn it up to the slowest slide that I want. this maxed out and I'm adjusting the limit of this with this knob. Now let's start playing with all of them. Why stop there? Why stop at that? How about, how about we add another voice? That's why I have the resonator here. So I'm going to take the voltage per octave, use my control voltage, and the strum, use my gate. I'm going to take the output. Oh, that's an in. I don't want to do in. I want to do an out. There we go. I'm going to take the mix and run it over here. And for the moment, let's mute this channel and hear what the other channel sounds like. Okay, that's kind of a cool sound. Great. Now let's mute that, turn on the other sound. Sounds a little uh, stranger thingy, doesn't it?
Now, wouldn't it be nice not to have to hit these, but to be able to blend them in? Well, it turns out that these sliders, which are normally used with a digital audio workstation to, uh, to run as a mixing board, are also continuous controllers. So let's come back over here. I'm going to say, learn this one. I'm going to flip a controller. Yep, 73. Learn this one. Next one, 75. Great. So let's take 73. I'm going to move it to the level CV of that and the level CV of this back here. So now moving these two sliders is just like moving these two sliders. Okay, so right now you can see the VCA popping, but nothing's coming out. And this is all the way up. Why? Because this physical slider is down. So now I'm going to use this. Now if I bring the other slider in, which means I can now mix the two sounds. Now, does my slew limiter affect this voice? No, because I only have the slew limiter going through the first voice. But if I bring the first voice in, the first voice will slide, the second voice won't. Think of all the things we can do with continuous controllers. Now, you did notice I was playing with the brightness dampening structure position of this voice to change the tonality. have three more, three more controllers left. I don't think I've used that one either. What if I assign these three controllers to these three knobs of my second voice? So let's do that. All I have to do is say, learn. Actually, I think I want to have that one. Yep, 76. Looks like 77 and it won't be 78, it'll be 10. I don't know why they're arranged that way, but they are. So that let's do the damping and we're gonna bring this down and give it a lot, a lot of attenuator. Remember that when using attenuators, 
if this is to the right of center, you want this to be low of center. So basically this is saying I want whatever comes through here to add to this. So if I have this all the way up here, there's not much room to add. So I want to give it a lot of room to add. The same thing, I'm going to go up and up, and this is going to go to here. This is going to go to here, and I'm going to bring this down and down. So if I bring these guys way up, I will have a very similar sound to what I already have. That may be a bit too much. Oh, you know what? It's not moving because I haven't hooked it up. Of course not. That is using continuous controllers to make VCV Rack a non-handicapped piece of software. We can use all our knobs, all our faders. We can use both hands. This is awesome. This keyboard was only about $160. Uh, it's amazing. I, I control my, my DAW with it. Uh, I have all these controllers. I have <laughs> touch pads. Uh, it's amazing. If you have even an inexpensive MIDI keyboard like this, you can get a tremendous amount of functionality out of VCV Rack. All right, folks, that's it for this episode. Stay curious. Give it a try. Try your uh, MIDI keyboard. Try your continuous controllers. See what else you can control. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe because that does help me out. And always, always, always stay curious.